The use of indirect dog training techniques is not limited to any specific group, but it can be said that the general public, including dog owners, pet enthusiasts, and families, are among the biggest users of indirect dog training methods. Indirect training methods often involve creating an environment that encourages desired behaviors and discourages undesirable ones through routines, interactions, and environmental cues. Many dog owners incorporate indirect training into their daily interactions with their pets without necessarily labeling it as such. For example, setting consistent schedules for feeding and walks can help reinforce desired behaviors like waiting patiently for meals or leash manners during walks. Indirect training methods are often intuitive and can be seamlessly integrated into daily routines, making them accessible and practical for a wide range of dog owners. However, professional dog trainers and behaviorists also utilize indirect training techniques as part of their broader training. Programs to address specific behavior issues or to enhance overall obedience and well-being in dogs. While indirect dog training methods are generally beneficial, there are instances where unintentional reinforcement of undesirable behaviors can occur. Here are a few ways in which dog owners might inadvertently contribute to the development or reinforcement of bad behaviors through indirect. Training 1. Inconsistency in rules. If different family members enforce different rules or boundaries inconsistently, it can confuse the dog and lead to inconsistent behavior. Indirect dog training methods can be considered less effective or even detrimental for dog owners who don't know. They are indirectly shaping bad behaviors with their dog for several reasons. 1. Lack of clarity. Indirect methods may lack clarity in communication between the owner and the dog, leading to confusion and inconsistency in training. 2. Misinterpretation. Dogs may misinterpret indirect cues or signals, resulting in undesired behaviors or failure to learn the intended commands. 3. Slow progress. Indirect methods often result in slower progress in training because they rely on implied cues rather than direct commands. 4. Ineffective corrections. Without clear, direct feedback, owners may struggle to correct unwanted behaviors effectively. 5. Loss of bonding. Direct training methods involving clear communication and positive reinforcement strengthen the bond between the owner and the dog. Indirect methods may not foster this bond as effectively. In summary, while indirect methods might seem easier or less confrontational, they often lead to confusion, slower progress, and a weaker bond between owner and dog. Direct training methods that involve clear communication and positive reinforcement tend to be more effective and beneficial for both the owner and the dog. Now, let's talk about the pros of indirect dog training methods and the benefits it can offer dogs under certain circumstances. 1. Less stressful. Some dogs may find direct training methods intimidating or stressful especially if they involve a lot of corrections or assertive commands. Indirect methods can be gentler and less confrontational, reducing stress for sensitive dogs. 2. Encourages problem-solving. Indirect methods often encourage dogs to think and problem-solve independently. For example, shaping behaviors through positive reinforcement allows dogs to explore and figure out what actions lead to rewards. 3. Promotes confidence. Indirect methods can help build a dog's confidence as they learn to make choices and receive positive feedback for their actions. 3. Promotes confidence. Indirect methods can help build a dog's confidence as they learn to make choices and receive positive feedback for their actions. 4. Fosters creativity and engagement. Dogs engaged in indirect training methods may become more creative and engaged in the learning process as they actively try to understand what is being asked of them. 5. Adaptable to different learning styles. 
Some dogs may respond better to indirect methods due to their individual learning styles or past experiences. These methods can be more adaptable to a dog's unique personality and needs. While indirect training methods can be beneficial in certain contexts, it's essential to balance them with clear communication and direct guidance to ensure effective and comprehensive training for the dog's overall well-being. What are some indirect dog training methods? Indirect dog training methods involve shaping behavior through environmental cues, capturing natural behaviors, or using subtle prompts rather than direct commands. Here are five examples. 1. Shaping behavior. This method involves rewarding successive approximations of the desired behavior. For instance, if you want your dog to sit, you might reward any movement towards sitting, gradually shaping the behavior until the dog fully sits on command. 2. Capturing behavior. Capturing involves waiting for the dog to naturally exhibit the desired behavior and then rewarding it. For example, if your dog spontaneously lies down, you can immediately praise and reward the behavior, reinforcing it as a desirable action. 3. Clicker training. Clicker training is a form of operant conditioning where a clicker is used to mark desired behaviors, followed by a reward. The clicker serves as a precise marker of the behavior, allowing the dog to understand exactly what action earned the reward. 4. Target training. In target training, dogs learn to touch or follow a specific object, such as a target stick or a hand target. This method can be used to teach a variety of behaviors, including agility skills, leash manners, and obedience commands. 5. Behavioral chains. This method involves linking a series of behaviors together to form a chain. Each behavior serves as a cue for the next behavior in the sequence. For example, in agility training, a dog might learn to navigate a course by responding to a series of verbal or visual cues that signal the next obstacle or action. These indirect methods leverage the dog's natural abilities and inclination to learn through exploration and observation, fostering a positive and engaging training experience.